Good afternoon. Sorry, I'm a bit tentative because my Facebook was doing some weird things, so I trust this works. Um, hi, welcome to episode 710. The episode today is um, living in the present is good, living for the moment, not so much. And I'll explain what that is in a moment and the framing of this too. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why you might want to watch this. Um, my name is Barry Selby. I am a best selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which also inspired these talks I've done now for over two years called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. A um, little bit abbreviated title at the front now to make room for more descriptive information. So today we're at episode number 710. Yeah, a lot of these are out there. And following on yesterday's broadcast, which was about um, not planning for the future, and the day before that, which was um, not healing your past, I think. I thought, well, I've done the past, done the future, let me start with the present. So here we are, <laughs> literally. And today's episode is again, is um, living in the present is good, living for the moment, not so much. So you only live once. Thank you for that, Adriana. Thank you so much. <laughs> actually, yeah, actually, well, I was going to say, thank you, thank you, Huntley, for the great job. I appreciate that. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, there are Facebook Live first, which is why I'm responding to people who are commenting. If you're watching it on YouTube, you won't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> so, I want to break this up into two pieces, which of course is living for the moment versus living in the present. Because they sound like the same thing, but they're not. Because, because, which way I'm going to, well, how am I going to start this one? Because living for the moment is, in a lot of ways, the um, that quick fix to numb the pain type thing. For a lot of people, they'd rather not deal with what's in what's really going on. So let me. I, need to, I think I need to include. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I need to include yesterday and the day before the broadcast, which is basically in, in Cliff Notes version, is getting a vision where you want to go, and also not carrying the baggage from the past into the future. When you're in the present, sometimes people are living for the moment to avoid both. They don't want to look at where they're going. They don't want to think about what's going to happen tomorrow. And they don't care about what happened yesterday. That isn't a good thing. Because for a lot of people, the avoidance is actually what caused the repetition. You see, um, to quote one of the people I quote from in my, t in my teachings, um, George Santi... George Santi... Um, <laughs> I pronounced his name properly. George Satyana, I think his name is. Basically, that those who don't learn from their... Fe people who don't learn from their history are doomed to repeat it. So if you're not looking, willing to look at what happened before, and you want to stay, you want you want to live for the moment, ignore what happened before, you're pretty much tending to have what happened before happen again. So if you did something bad in the past, or you made a mistake, well, not necessarily made did something bad. If something bad happened in the past because of a mistake you made, if you don't learn from that mistake, it's possible you can make that same mistake again, and that's going to bring more discomfort, upset, pain, wounding to your life. Not fun. So. Facing the past, which I talked about a couple of days ago, is relevant and useful, so you don't keep dragging it around with you everywhere you go, having it affect and impact your daily life. That's no fun. On the other side, if you do have, sorry, if you don't have any plans for the future, intentions, vision, or anything else, then you have a, um, let me put this, a distinct. Let me sorry, I just went sideways for a second. Let me bring that back. If you don't choose to look at your, your tomorrows, what's coming in the future, then you don't know where you're gonna go. I mentioned yet in that broadcast about having no plan for the future is, is an old quote, which is basically, and I, I draw lots of quotes into my broadcast, by the way. Um, but if you don't know where you're going, it doesn't, you don't know when you, you don't, if you don't know where you're going, you don't know when you get, you don't know when you get there. If that makes any sense. It doesn't, I know. Or another, thing, so another way of saying it is if you don't have a destination in mind, any port will do. That's a navigation term from somewhere way back as well. What I'm attempting to say here is if you don't have a picture, an image, a direction, a focus where you want to go in life, it's unlikely, highly unlikely, that you're going to have actual results show up where you want to go because you're not sure what you're looking for. Now, for some people, they want to live oblivious, and that's fine for them. But if you're watching my broadcast, you know I encourage you to have a clarity of where you want to go, what you want to accomplish, where you want to succeed and thrive in life. So back, bring it back to the present, because that's what we're talking about today. So living for the moment 
is a way of avoiding both dealing with the past and planning for the future. Whereas living in the present is being aware of both the past and the future, at least the way I interpret it is, and I mean it this way. Living in the present means that you are experiencing what's happening now, being aware of anything that impinges from the past into the present moment so you can deal with it, looking at where you want to take your steps forward because you're starting where you are now, but you know you've got a destination to get to. So if you have a vision of where you want to go, say the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. I'm throwing quotes galore at you to say, which is great. But the thing about that is if you are continuing to know where you want to go, a journey of a thousand miles that's destination far away, taking a step today in the present moment is a wise move. Tomorrow, another step. The day after that, another step. So you're not planning that thousand mile journey all the way out, but you know where you want to go. And you're taking the step today you can take. That's living in the present. Again, um, I said living in the present, staying present, living in the moment, staying. I'm confusing myself now. Let's just say that when you are living in the present, being present, and present to what's going to happen, you're much more able to respond to the way life works. You're also able to get a clarity of making the right choice to move forward in the direction you want to head in. And also you find when things happen, happen serendipitously, because they do, or coincidentally, depending how your life is reflected, then you can be in a place to actually do something about it. Where if you're just living for the moment and you have no desire to focus on the future, th opportunities, intuitions, um, serendipitous coincidences, to blend them together, can happen and you have no clue they happened. You'll eventually be oblivious to them. And frankly, that's missing out on huge opportunities. It's like basically winning the jackpot but not but don't even know you won it. That's how much of a discomfort it could be. So I'm attempting to explain to you the power of living present now, being in the present of your life, and being able to choose, turn, move, respond to what's happening in your life consciously, actively, and effectively from the place you are. That's a healthy place to be. Because by being present in the present, you are in the place of the most, um, it's like being, being on a pivot point. You're in the right place to choose to go forward, to go where you want to go. However, as I said in the previous two broadcasts, which I invite you to go watch, by the way, I do recommend you watch my broadcasts I'm talking about because they'll be of value to you. Clearing up the past crap, baggage, upset, distress, when you'll call that stuff in the past, and having a clear vision of where you want to go makes living in the present a much more enjoyable, comfortable, and effective way to live life. Just three things, the past, the present, and the future. But that's really what I talk about is in, in my coaching work, and in fact, my free video series on my website, which I've now told you what they are, <laughs> talks about your past, present, and future. It's an old video series, by the way, from about seven years ago, so it doesn't need to be updated, but it still makes the same points, which is you really need for your own success, thriving opportunities to go forward, to work in the present moment, to really clear out past, focus on the future, and be present in the moment, and embrace who you are in the moment. Now, a couple of things I want to, I want to tag into that. Living in the present is great if you do something with your present kind of obvious I would say but here's the thing living in the present where you are um, doing things constructively to assist you in the journey you're taking are a wise way to approach your life in the future and how you want to go so for example if you spend your days doing self-love practices like offering my self-love um meditation practice that I have, I can put a link in the comments, you'll see it, you can check it out, then you're building up a new sustaining methodology of living your life from a place of love. It's a continual um, habit pattern you're installing, I'm not, but that's an installing logo a bit, I guess, you're installing so you can actually have more joy, more success, more abundance in your life. That's a wise place to start. The course I just, I've been marketing for a while, which I'm gonna promote here, as I mentioned it too, coming home to yourself, is a way to bring yourself to the place in yourself in the present that allows you to thrive and be successful in the present in your life. That'll also be in the comments too. You can check that out as well. I'm not sure if it's that way or this way. Somewhere around this broadcast, there'll be comments and I'll put a post in there of self-love practice and the um, coming home to yourself course because they're both relevant to bringing yourself forward in the present moment to be more effective, more successful, more joyful, and more... 
What's him looking for? More present? Yeah. But more loving too. I'm a big fan of that, in case you haven't figured that out by now. Um, I think it's really one that I want to make that point. Because again, to be honest, well, let, me, let me say it this way. The only time we have is now. That's kind of an obvious statement. But by being present now, it means being, means being responsive to now as well. For some people, they like to be asleep at the wheel and try to ignore, ignore now. It doesn't work that way. Whether they want to tune out or um, numb out with doing drugs or alcohol or something else or food or video games, whatever it is, that can take you away from being present to yourself. I'm recommending doing things that actually bring you more present to yourself. Again, coming home to yourself, the name of the course seems pretty obvious. And the self-love practice. Again, self is in both. Because when you bring yourself home to yourself in the present, you actually build up your own self-support structures. You, build, you create a framework and a support system that really change your life. However, you need to choose it. Yes, I'm putting it on your responsibility in your hands. You get to, you get to be responsive. You get to be um, proactive. And you get to be willing to take the next step to live your life more effectively, more successfully, more fully in the present moment. I keep coming back to that, I know. So I encourage you to look at your life as a moment-to-moment -moment experience by checking in every single moment. This is, this is your homework I'm giving you, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't warn you of that, did I? So your homework, if you choose to accept it, is to be present to yourself all the time. How do you do that, you wonder? Is simply when you remember, because it won't be a 24-7 thing, it'll be a, a sporadic and an occasional thing initially, but it'll take more time to be, it'll take some time to become more and more aware of it. But what it is, is when you're present to yourself, you can watch your breathing. You can make sure you're breathing deeply, fully. When you're present to yourself, you can notice that you've been doing something else and you, you drifted away for 10 minutes and you come back to being present. When you're present to yourself more presently and in moments and moment experiences or moments and moment um, awareness, that's a good word, awareness, it can actually change the way you live your life because you your life won't slide by. You'll be present to it and actually responsive to it. And again, being responsive is what I'm recommending so that you are actually living in the present in a powerful, present way. I think I've made enough emphatic points. You get my point on this. Just seems anything else in this that I want to bring. So past, future, present, now. I have recommendations for what you can do that help you. And I recommend that you do practice this to be steady, to be present to yourself now, because the more you can live in the present and the more you can be aware moment to moment of your now in the present, the more you can respond to life, stay tuned to life and feel that life is working for you. Because when you are present in the moment, you start realizing the big secret is life is there for you. What an idea that is. So having said all that, I think that makes sense. And I think I'll leave it there because I got something I need to do in the moment. Um, I thank you for watching my broadcast as always. I let you know the replays where you can find them. Again, the links will be in the comments for the two things I mentioned. This is my daily Facebook Live. I do at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page, which is barryselby.author, in case you want to watch the replays there. Or if you want to watch them on YouTube, I have a YouTube channel called Barry Selby. Please subscribe to the channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. Um, I hope this has been of, of I think, well, I know this is of value to somebody. Maybe not you, but if it is of value to you, I'd love to hear from you. Um, any thoughts, questions, feedback, please put them below in the comments and I'll check into them later, um, whatever platform you're on. If you want some more help in getting clarity about your direction, focus, and your goals, your vision, your intentions, reach out to me. I can help you. And again, I'll put the links in the comments for the self-love practice and the coming home to yourself course that's starting shortly. With that, I thank you for watching. Um, yeah, an interesting conversation, I know. I'm back in tomorrow at the same time, 5 p.m. Pacific time, with something new and different. We'll see what it's going to be. And I invite you to have a great evening. Enjoy your Sunday, and I'll see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Bye.